The supermarket I chose is No Frills because I think that their prices are cheaper for essentially the same products or produce as Loblaws, since they are owned by them, which means that they work with the same suppliers. Additionally, No Frills is my go-to grocery store to shop at because this No Frills is in the plaza in my neighborhood, which makes it very convenient for me. As you can see, this plaza also has Shoppers Drug Mart right across from No Frills. Again, this plaza makes it very convenient for me when it comes to grocery shopping. As you walk past the first gate at Norfolk's, I noticed that they have seasonal items on display right before you actually enter the Norfolk's main door. A month ago, they had numerous pumpkins laid out at the front due to Halloween season. Now, as you can see, they just have seasonal fruits. Right when you walk into Norfolk's, the first thing you see are the vegetables and fruits. OPIRG states that the high-priced items are typically placed at the beginning of the store due to consumers spending more money in the beginning of their trip. Produce is perishable, so supermarkets want to move it quickly. Consumers tend to spend more money at the beginning of their shopping trip rather than the end, and consequently, produce sales are marked higher when fresh fruits and vegetables are located in the first aisle. As learned in class, you are manipulated right when you walk into the store. The main one being is the amount of red that is seen, which evokes the feeling of hunger and impulse buys. You could see it in the banners, labels, and tables. Right beside the fruits and veggies, we have the cheese section which according to OPIRG is complemented by other products, such as crackers. This is known as boutiquing. We see this throughout the whole store. Another example are the sauces being on sale, which are placed right beside the meat section. OPIRG's research tells us that many stores only have one entrance, which is to control where consumers start shopping. The next section is the meat section, which I want to focus on as my point of interest. I love meat since it gives me the protein that I need, and I tend to buy a couple of them every week. As you can see, there is a good amount of variety of meat that they offer. They also have kosher meat and halal for those that require it due to their tradition or religion. The color settings placed in this section have often persuaded me to buy that type of meat, which comes from their numerous signs that advertise lower prices. Moving on to a serious note, there have been numerous problems when it comes to the meat section. The most important is how the animals are treated. Usually they are abused. One of the methods used to profit from chickens is called crowding. Animals are often confined to a space with barely enough room to take a few steps. Without sufficient room to walk or stretch their wings, hens can become violent. According to OPIRG, the suffering caused by crowding reduces egg production, but it still remains the most profitable way to produce eggs because chickens are cheap and cages are expensive. Crowding essentially leads to another type of problem, which is sick animals. OPIRG states that since there are a lot of animals that live in overcrowded conditions without much access to the outdoors, it significantly reduces their quality of life and making them prone to illness. Furthermore, I have learned that antibiotics and hormones are used to help combat the risk of disease. However, antibiotics don't just have the purpose to fight off diseases. They're administered to animals for the purpose of promoting growth. OPRG indicates that although those antibiotics are eliminated through peeing or pooping, it is still possible for those drugs to remain within those animals, which can cause problems for people who are allergic or sensitive to those drugs. This causes a lot of decision making when it comes to buying meat from a supermarket. Some alternatives to take steps in changing the meat industry to do such acts are reducing your consumption of meat products, meaning to go vegetarian, know where your meat comes from, and find out where your eggs come from. This next section is the milk section. They offer two different varieties which are milks in boxes and those in bags. From what I've noticed, this store does a remarkable job of rotating which means to put those who are expiring the earliest at the beginning of the tray. As picky as it sounds, I tend to scoop the milk from the bag so that my milk expires at a later date. To talk more about aisle 1, which is going to the supermarket, they have implemented their luring tactic by providing us with a loyalty program. I personally have joined in the loyalty program that Norfolk's and Choppers offers. I did it because I often do my groceries or shop at these two stores, and by purchasing items weekly, I am able to stack up my points which I can redeem in a form of payment when I have enough that suffices. Furthermore, these loyalty programs offer exclusive deals and sales specifically tailored to the person shopping, which I think is a very incredible marketing tactic. I also have noticed that the shopping carts that Norfolk's have are very large and for shoppers it's very deep. OPRG states that the carts are designed this way for supermarkets to give an illusion that using a whole cart for a few items is a waste. I believe that this is true because every time I'm with my mom, we always tend to fill up most of the cart because of her buying methods. She believes that since we're at the grocery store, it is smart to plan ahead and we might as well buy those that we can use in the future. However, this happens so often within the month. From what I've noticed, the express lane is rarely used in my no frills, which indicates that the majority of the people shopping here are purchasing more than 8 items. When buying specific items, I tend to find out that they are usually not placed on the eye level. OPRG indicates that this is a marketing strategy used to place such products at eye level to sell better than those products placed above or below them. Oftentimes, the products placed at eye level are more expensive than those that are above or below it. Furthermore, the eye is trained to move from left to right. OPRG states that more expensive products are placed to the right of less expensive ones, 
This encourages customers to scan shelves looking for the product they intended to buy and forces them to look through all the varieties, which increases the chances of impulse purchases. An alternative method that I use to prevent myself from spending more and making impulse buys is by sticking to a list. I chose to investigate aisle 1 and aisle 3, which is going to the market and the meat market. I chose these two because I find it interesting how products are placed a certain way and are located at a specific spot within the store to better the chances of them being bought. I also chose the meat market because of my love for meat, and seeing as how they are provided makes me feel some way. In terms of aisle 1, I agree with all of the information presented to me, and I find their marketing tactics very useful and strong. As I read through OPRG's information, I found that some of their marketing tactics work when I go grocery shopping, and I find that fascinating as it usually works. In terms of the meat market, I still think that it will not change the way I buy when it comes to meat. I personally love my protein that comes from my meat, which makes it very difficult for me to consider alternatives. However, I do find it unfortunate that the animals are being abused and should definitely have some alternatives when it comes to taking care of them. This concludes my supermarket tour at Norfrills. For those wondering what I did with the Pillsbury cookies, I baked them and devoured them within the first hour. Thanks for watching.